I've been asked to look up the following set of subjects, names. They're given vaguely so that it's hard to find them. This video should help you find out what you were looking for. I should also get sued for it, but here we go. Vatican, because someone threw that in. Concave lens telescopes, which, unless you know exactly what you're looking at from the website, might sort of make sense. Uh, viewing antimatter. Okay. Well, antimatter experiments have occurred, and these sort of experiments have actually been done and studied, and you can learn about this if you want to go through a college course and actually learn something, or you can be a maverick and refuse to do so. Santilli. Not, not that Santilli, not, uh, not Hopalong. This, uh, this isn't the Pete version. This is, a, this is a different Santilli. Maybe they're related. And Incredible Pictures. No, there aren't any scientists that say the pictures you see on a website selling telescopes that are built so that they don't actually focus light. There aren't any scientists, actual scientists, that say that that proves invisible alien entities are here on Earth. That's like saying we found a stealth aircraft. See the lack of wreckage? So anyway, here we go. 1935, a legend was born. <clears throat> Ruggiero Maria Santilli, an Italian-American nuclear physicist. He's filed a number of lawsuits alleging the suppression of his scientific ideas because being suppressed is the easiest way to get buzz on the internet and claims to have decades of research on antimatter but doesn't understand that matter-antimatter annihilations produce ordinary light. He was the uh, Magna Gas Corporation person at one time. It's now a penny stock. It used to be worth, in 2012, over $1,000 per share. Now it's... You can look at the graph below. Just go look it up. Look, just click it. Um, now apparently is associated with a company called Hadronic Journal and Algebra's Group and Geometries. Uh, if you're not curious about it, well, even if you are, uh, a Hadron... <laughs> A hadron is a, is, a, is a description of a type of matter, subatomic matter. Or, or it isn't. You can look this up. I'll, I'll include a link below. Um, ignoring definitions or just misusing them doesn't mean that you're a maverick or that you're breaking the conditioning. It just means you're ignoring the definition for freaking words. Next. Uh, 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 next. Hadronic Technologies Press, another publication company. And then Thunder Fusion Corporation, which may or may not have anything to do with fusion or thunder. And Thunder Energies Corporation, and who knows what else that will be suing me for not mentioning that these are uh, trademark and service mark belonging to somebody else. It's not mine. He may have said the following, or not, depending on what people want to say. I, I have experience with this, so I, I, this isn't my first rodeo, so I'm not claiming this person said these things. This person's rumored to have said the following. Covalent bonds are impossible if quantum mechanics is true. That's not really true at all. That's, that's horseshit. Next. Um, HHO gas. Yes. Yes. This, this shit again. Yes. <clears throat> must, must be something to talk about. Magna gas and magna hydrogen are trade and or service marks owned by their respective owners. I don't own anything here. If you're trademarking a variation on the word water, we have a problem, Houston. Next. Saying these things that aren't demonstrable, provable, or existent are composed of magnacules instead of molecules. Because we don't measure things in mole, we measure them in magna, or uh, gauss, uh, flux capacitor, are caused by magnecular bonds instead of molecular bonds because someone is pushing pronunciation and misuse of some language. Bonds of atoms held together by magnetic fields instead of electric charges. These have to arise from toroidal polarization of electron orbitals around atoms because that's the only way they can occur. There's a special form of molecular bonding between atoms based on the atoms forming a 
torus of electrons moving uh, in a certain way. And it's referred to as, again, toroidal polarization. You forgot to say the vortex energies and higher vibrations. If you're stupid and you know it, slap your face. So anyway, um, I'm doing a good job containing my mouth right now. Next. <clears throat> A number of scientists, including Nobel laureates Sheldon Glashow and Steven Weinberg, have conspired to stop him from conducting research while he was Harvard, which might have led to the inapplicability of Einstein's theory of relativity, because there's a massive goal in contrarianism to somehow overthrow Einstein as some sort of edifice of perfection when Einstein has been shown to be wrong about a bunch of stuff. We don't actually use Einstein the way people say that we do. He's become a symbol. It's like screaming very loudly um, in 2016, all of the votes for Hillary were, were illegal votes. It's not real. It's just something you yell. It's a battle cry. It has nothing to do with anything in the real world. So next, we go on to the next layer of uh, this cake. So anyway, papers he submitted to peer-reviewed American physical society journals were rejected because, A, they're literally word salad that doesn't make any damn sense. No, that's my peer review. Or, and here's the quote of the day, they were controlled by Jewish physicists led by Steven Weinberg. It's not like he was critiqued by random college students who said, uh, you got an equation wrong, you're misapplying things. Okay. Um, <clears throat> next assertion by, by this person that may or may not be this person. We don't know this. Um, next. The Jewish cabal of, of, of review journals trying to suppress your, uh, your uh, electric universe theories or something, right? It's the same meme, isn't it? You know, uh, there's an amazingly large number of Jews that exist, apparently, because their actual population is pretty small. Let's move on. Um, anyway, assertion. If antimatter light must have energy opposite that of matter light, which doesn't make any sense, why would it have an opposite energy? It could have an opposite phasing. No, that's not real. Phasing is an angle. If it's phased this way, then the other phase would just be this way. Uh, polarity? Dead, yeah, okay, sure. But the, uh, it's not an opposite energy. That's not just vague. That's a glittering generality that appeals to woo peddlers who believe in their inner zonk and yang. And not your wang. So anyway, let's go on to the next part of this. God help us all. Shoot me. Um... Antimatter produces antimatter light, which is special. It can only be focused using concave lenses. Okay, I'm nearsighted, so I wear a pair of biconcave lenses. They can be monoconcave, or just monocaved, or just caved in. Uh, I make these. So, I actually know what I'm talking about. Now, as you can see from the pixels, uh, you can see a picture of the screen. The most likely thing you would focus, quote-unquote, with a concave lens would be your eyeball or the camera. <sighs> Bringing my mind temperature down below that of lava. Next. To prove this point, that only antimatter light can be focused with anti-lenses, these are antifocal lenses. He then cites himself and then misquotes Paul Adrian Maurice Dirac because screw it, let's just go there. And there's a fake journal, the American, it's not a fake journal, it's a real journal, the American Journal of Modern Physics. Sounds good, don't it? They're a, not a peer-reviewed anything, they're, they're a vanity publishing thing. It's to give you credence when you're selling your perpetual motion machine. So anyway, we see grainy images of invisible terrestrial entities visible only through a special telescope that literally is based on lens flare technologies. We are the monks that smack our heads with boards. Funk. So anyway, uh, 2006 Brown University professor of engineering and long-suffering engineer, Joseph M. Halo described a number of errors in his article that he published at one point. 
and stated that the descriptions are insufficient to reproduce data. That would be required in order to do anything for the scientific method, so it was automatically failed. A Dutch scientific skepticism society named, I'm not naming it, has a member named Pepgen van Erp, I'm not making that up, who, s who failed to find, despite multiple requests, any credentials for the one person who, who, who debunked that, who called himself J.V. Kedevelilovilski. It might not have been existent. This sounds like a shimchuk. So let's review the keywords for the day, shall we? Now, of course, we throw in Vatican and apparently Jews because someone has to throw these words in here to get search engine... If I put it in the title, I'll get flagged. <laughs> so I won't do it. Okay, Vatican I can get away with, right? Who cares about the Vatican, right? So anyway, um, if you were coming here to get confirmation biased, I'm, I'm giving you negative bias here. Yes, that's an electronics joke. Invisible alien entity. No, it's a badly focusing non-telescope. It's designed to create visual aberrations by using a negative lens as the one in front. There is something called a concave reflecting lens, sometimes called a... Well, it's just a reflecting telescope, but this is the opposite. This is literally the opposite of a lens. It's a defocusing element. A concave lens is not going to show you invisible alien entities. It's going to show you aberrations and weirdnesses inside the camera. This can be tested by simply lining up with what you're seeing and then making sure you can get between the main lens and your pickup device, which would be the lens, it would be the camera or your eye, and put an object in there, a very tiny one, and see if you suddenly see it. Uh, I would recommend getting a micrograph of the letter M or E and literally use it that way until you find the focal point that produces it. Random bits of dust floating around could do this. Anything. You would get intermittent behavior. Perfect environment to do this. I should also point out that there's another method for using um, polarized light in a special type of mirror to see heat and mechanical shock waves from things going at Mach. I'll include a link below. So anyway, next, the Vatican. Why is that thrown in here? Search engine ranking? I'll throw it in. Next, Stantilli's telescope is not a telescope. Telescope means distant vision. This is the polar opposite of distant. It's not a telescope, it's a anti-scope. Next, not micro either. Would be an inefficient and badly made, and really badly made, microscope. So it would have to just be an anti-scope. Anti-sight. Next, viewing antimatter. What makes you think that in the core of a star we don't have antimatter reactions producing light as well? I'm sorry, I, 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 why, not, why not come up with that idea? Um, so anyway, uh, uh, we're at 13 minutes and I've wasted everybody's time. My conclusion, this is somebody trying to sell expensive telescopes or get lots and lots of in, in investors to show up for something that's a bunch of uh, word salad that doesn't mean anything, uh, just like every other scam I've seen on the net. And the thing is, I came into this thinking, okay, maybe he had a different type of... Uh, a uh, telescope. No, it's not a telescope. It's um, not much different than the funhouse mirror thing that you got in school or when you were a kid. You would turn and it would have a kaleidoscope. Yeah, uh, it's literally just a light show thing. That's all this is good for. You can say you're seeing all sorts of things. People do that all the time when they look at webcams or use a camera or use their cell phone. Um, but this is literally just a lens flare generator. Thanks for watching. Have a good